For the haircut that we're going to learn in this lesson, we call this the gentleman's taper. Basically, the gentleman's taper is that classic taper that is uh, just neat off the ears. We're going to leave enough hair for the hair to comb back or to brush back. And uh, we're going to finish it off with a nice taper around the outline of the haircut. Uh, the one mistake I find people make with um, this particular haircut, especially with um, your senior clientele, is that the last thing you should ask this customer when they sit down is what number do you get on the sides? This is not a clipper cut. This is not a haircut. You just put an attachment on a clipper and run it up the side of the head. This particular customer is used to having his barber his whole life. It's a scissor over comb haircut. And you're really going to be able to tell that um, you know what you're doing and you're really fluid with your tools. So again, this is the gentleman's taper and we're gonna get right into the haircut. Okay, with the hair freshly shampooed, it's a little dry so we're gonna just slightly damping it. You never want hair dripping wet because you can't tell what the hair is gonna do when you cut it if it's dripping wet. So lightly damp, you can read all the lines of demarcation that you make with your scissor and also it takes away the static electricity so the hair is not flying all over you or your client. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the bang length and use that as my center guide. I never want to comb the bangs down and just cut them straight across because what happens is if they're too short they won't comb to the side. What's going to make this haircut stand out also is the hair combing to the side. So we're going to pull the hair up at 90 degrees and we're going to use the bang length right there as our guide to get our center guide. I'm going to use a scissor over comb technique. The comb is moving very slow and I'm taking a lot of sections. So by doing this, we don't wind up with any scissor marks or cut, or cut marks, especially with lighter colored hair. Every little, every little imperfection will show. So the next thing I'm going to do is on my left hand side, I'm going to pull the bangs up at 90 degrees. I can see my center guide. I have two guides, my center guide and my bang length guide. And I'm going to do the same thing, moving the comb back slow. One section at a time. And as I get to the, to the back, I don't want to cut these hairs in the crown that's, that's going to stick up. So I want to make sure this angle of my comb, you can see it's longer in the front and it's longer in the back. So as I work on my cutting plane, I just follow that plane all the way through. I'm going to take one more section on the left side, just above the round of the head. I'm just going to cut a little bit of hair there. And then we'll move on to the other side. And after every time you make a few cuts, comb the hair back into place and make sure it's, make sure it's moving you know, in the right direction. So now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to pull the hair up at a 90 degree angle, use our center guide, and work our way back slowly. And then we're going to take one more section just above the round of the head. Now the most important thing you need to remember is when you're working on the top section, this is a square shaped haircut. The comb has to be completely parallel to the floor. Once you start rounding the corners, then you're going to cut in too close to the part area and it's not going to, the hair's not going to move right. It's going to be too short and it's going to stick out. And then for the last thing, if we're going to take a little bit of length off the bangs, what I like to do is come underneath this way and, and cut the bangs just like this. And then we can elevate the comb up slightly just to avoid a heavy a heavy line across the, the bangs. Otherwise, it's going to look like we just put a bowl on his head and cut across. So everything we're doing with men's hair cutting is we want to leave a nice natural outline. And then don't ever be afraid to just take a towel and quickly brush off the client's face if a little bit of hair falls on there. So that is how we cut the top section. Very slow, scissor over comb, one section at a time. If you were to pick it up with your fingers, you would just do the same thing, but you would have to take a lot of sections. If you counted how many times I open and close that scissor, it's probably 15 to 20 times. So, I mean, you have to take a lot of sections to duplicate that accuracy. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the round of the head section. We're going to start out right in the front area right here near the bangs. And the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you never want the taper on the sides to go higher than the bangs. So what I mean by that is when you comb the bang length down here, the blend on the sides should finish where the bangs start. It should not be, the blend should not be up here around the round of the head and the bangs are longer. The whole haircut will be out of balance. So as I start in through this section here, this round of the head section, I want to make sure that the angle of my comb finishes out so that hair never gets into the comb. So I'm going to cut on this plane and I'm going to slowly pull the comb away from the head 
So all that hair falls out of the comb and those bangs never go into the comb. So we never cut it too short here or a hole or leave a hole in the bang area. So I'm not worried about any of this hair around here. That's the next section. The only thing I'm focusing on is one section at a time, starting with the top section and now the round of the head section. I'm using a large black comb. So the large comb is allowing me to control the hair better. And the color of the comb, dark comb on light color hair allows me to see the hair better. And then what I do is I slowly turn the chair. I always keep my feet in the same spot. Makes it a lot easier and more efficient during the day. Now a quick tip for your scissor and comb cutting is when you use a larger comb, if you tilt the comb in to put rest the teeth of the comb on the scalp and angle the comb, the, the base of the comb away from the scalp, makes it a lot easier. It picks the hair up easier versus doing it the opposite direction. You're just pushing hair and every time you do that, you're creating, you're creating another weight line. So that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid leaving any weight lines. Okay, so then we just work our way all the way around and you want to keep this angle in your mind. You want to leave enough hair around the round of the head so we have that square shape so the hair will comb back. If we cut it too short, it's just going to stick out and the haircut is not going to be balanced. And then basically, just like on the top, you can always see your previous guide in your comb. As I'm working around, there's my previous guide. And then if you have trouble with the comb sticking in the hair, the hair might be a little too dry, you can always just re-dampen it just slightly. And then we're just going to follow that all the way around. And hopefully you can see the advantage of using a larger comb, how easily it goes through the hair. And then we'll drop down to our smaller combs as, as we go around the um, sides and back and semi-finish area. Just like if you were doing a shorter clipper cut, you would drop down to smaller attachments. So all you need to focus on is cutting one panel at a time, one section at a time. Don't cut across the comb into the next section, just one section at a time. And as we work our way towards the front, there's two angles we have to keep in mind. Even though we're keeping the comb parallel to the side of the head, we want to make sure that we don't round it in towards the front. If we round it in too much, we're going to cut this hair too short. This hair in front needs to be a little bit longer so it brushes back. And then while I'm on this side, what I'll do is I'm going to take this my smaller comb. This was the round of the head section. Now we're going to dip down into the sides and back section, which is a two finger, which is a two finger width below the round of the head section. And then that leaves you a one finger width above the outline, which is going to be your semi finish. So it's just this area now we're going to focus on. We're going to use a smaller comb. And you can see this is our guide right here that we're going to cut to, but not into. So we want to blend to that guide. So now we're using a smaller comb. And we're going to do the same thing with our scissor over comb technique. As I said, for efficiency, we stand on one side in one place and we spun the chair this way. Now I'm going to start <clears throat> on the left hand side and work my way back around. So you can see the benefit to the scissor over comb technique. It's an extremely important. You can control a lot of different lengths in the haircut. Another word for it is graduation, the hair um, from shorter to longer. So we're starting a little bit lower. The comb is always parallel to the side of the head for this particular haircut. So you want to picture this angle in your mind. If this hair was long enough to pick up, 
like this. Basically, you have your bottom guide, and then you have your previous guide that you left, and it's the hair in the middle that we're working to cut. It's just shoot too short to pick up with your fingers. Okay, and slowly spin the chair. Keep an eye on how slow the comb moves and how fast the scissors moving. It's very important that that comb moves slow so you don't skip any sections or skip any hair. If you move the comb too fast, that's when you wind up with a lot of the um, cut marks or scissor marks. Okay, so now that brings us all the way around. We've done the top section, we've done the round of the head section, we've done the sides and the back section. Now we're going to work on beginning the taper in the semi-finish area. And the semi-finish area is the two finger width, one to two finger width above the ears and around the outline of the haircut. So we're going to do that with a clipper over comb technique and an adjustable clipper. Now an adjustable clipper, we call it an adjustable clipper because it has a lever on it and you can open it and close it. I like to start out with it in the open position which when you open it up, it extends the blade and it makes, makes the actual length of the blade thicker. And what that does is it gives it a, uh, a softer, more, more blended cut. So then we just go around the outline of the haircut. Now what I like to do here is I don't want to cut in to the area I already cut. I want to rest the, the base of the comb at the base of the outline or the hairline all the way around. And we're going to control, control the length just by angling the comb. And when we find the angle we want, then we just take that imaginary line until we run out of hair. Okay, and when we blend that in, you can close the, the blade down, make it shorter. Now we're going to take care of the sideburn length. We're going to open the blade back up and taper it out. When you pull the ear down, you can see the hair pop out around the ear. So we're going to taper it around. Start with the blade in the open position and then close it. Then hold the ear down and do the same thing behind the ear at a 45 degree angle. Take the first five or six teeth of that cutting blade and go right around the ear and in front of the ear. And that completes the semi-finish in front of the ear. Now we're going to work our way around behind the ear. Now this is kind of an awkward angle and it's kind of hard to get your elbow way up in the air. So on this side, what I do is I keep my elbow low and I work in an upward manner. Continuing on with a 45 degree angle around the outline. Now for the outline, we don't want to round it in. You see we have a different, different color hair. You have the beard hair, you have some dark hair, and you have some lighter color hair. It's our job to create a hairline. We want it nice and square and tapered at the bottom. We don't want to cut in and we don't want to round it right off. That's not how a man's haircut should be finished. A masculine hairline, the outline should be as far out as possible and it should be straight down. And then it should, it should square off at the bottom with the bottom being tapered. So basically I'm using the guide here that I left off with and I'm going to blend into that guide. And you can cut across your comb, you can cut up, you can cut on a diagonal, whichever is most comfortable for you. But the idea is you want to remove as much of that thickness as you can before you go in with an open blade right on the skin. So as we remove all of that heavy area, then we can take the blade in an open position and then start to taper out the bottom. And then after you do it in an open position, you can close the blade halfway down. You do it again and you don't go quite as high. Then you close it down all the way again and you don't go up quite as high. And 
then we just continue on around through to the other side. Removing the excess, excess bulk first, and then once that's cleared up, then you can go in with your open blade. If you go in with your open blade first, you're going to wind up cutting up into the hairline because you're going to lose sight of the cutting teeth, and you're going to go up too high. Close the blade halfway. Close it all the way. Okay, we're going to keep spinning the client. We're going to come hold the, hold the ear down with your finger, then comb in with your comb. Then the comb will take the place of your finger and hold the ear down. So the first thing when you're coming around the ear is comb behind the ear, just like that. So the comb protects the ear, and we remove that hair first. Then the next step is the comb holds the ear down. We cut that off. Then your finger holds the ear down, and then you take the rest of it off. And then in front of the ear, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to taper out the sideburn area in front of the ear. Now the idea is we want to have all the semi-finished area completed before we come back with our outliner or our teeth finisher clipper. Okay, so now that we have all that done, we're going to take a smaller comb and our finishing clipper. Now these, these clippers, these finishing clippers, they're only meant for finishing. They're only meant for edging off, shaving up. They're not meant for any clipper over comb work. It's not small enough. All your clipper over comb should be done with your adjustable clipper. So now that we have everything tapered out, we're going to make a line on the sideburn and we're going to shave up. We never Hold the clipper here and drag it down. If we drag it down, the cutting teeth are so close to the stationary blade that you're in danger of the cutting teeth going directly to the skin and causing razor marks. We, that's what we're trying to avoid. So we pull that ear down. You can see all that hair pop out over the ear. Now with these haircuts, a common request or complaint when a, um, your customer comes back is that the hair touched my ears too quick. So it's very important that you pull the ear down and make sure you, without drawing a big arcing, you know, white strip or white wall around the edges, you, you want to make sure that you get all this hair off from behind the ear. And then while you're on the ear, what I do is I just put my thumb right in front of the ear and pull that part out. And if there's any little bit of a fuzz in the ear, you can get in and grab any bit of that little bit of fuzz and then you just run the clipper blade over the rim of the ear. Okay, and then as we're working our way around, same thing right here. We want to stay on that diagonal. I don't want to cut in too far. We have a nice taper right there. I don't want to cut it off. So we're just going to very lightly make a line and shave up to it. The hairline and the taper is already done, so all we need to do is clean up the neck without getting anywhere as close to the hairline. If you get too close to the hairline and you put a nick in the bottom of the hairline, you're going to wind up having to retaper it out and it's going to be up way too high up by the ears. Okay, so very slowly, we're just going to work all our, our way all the way around in an upward shaving motion. And as we get to the other side, you can see the same thing. You want to keep it at a diagonal. We're just going to make our line. And we're going to shave up to it. We're going to pull the ear down. We 
We're going to pull it down in the front, make sure we get that little bit of hair. Line off the sideburn and shave up. Okay, so now the haircut is basically complete. We want to just take one more step and we want to texturize the hair a little bit. We want to take a, um, a texturizing scissor and we want to just go through and take a little bit of the heaviness out of the hair so as it grows in it'll hold its shape. So what I do is I go through in the same motion, I close the scissor only a quarter to a half way. I don't want to take too much hair out, I just want to take just a little bit of the thickness. Okay, now as you can see it, it blends together and brushes back a little bit nicer. And we're going to do that same thing all the way around. And especially in the back here, we don't want to cut this hair any shorter because it's not going to stand up. But we do want to blend in a little of the heaviness so it blends into the rest. So very carefully, you're just going to close that scissor a quarter to half away. And you're going to follow that same angle that we followed before when we did our scissor over comb with the straight scissor. Now the tricky spot on a lot of these haircuts is the part side. What you'll tend to find a lot is the part side here is always going to be a little bit shorter than on the other side. and It's going to be harder to lay down because it's closer to the part. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this. If you take it too short, it's going to stick out. Okay, so that finishes up texturizing the sides and the back, and then we're going to go through and we're going to use this technique on the top along with a little bit of a straight razor technique on the top. So go through the top the second time around the same way as the first. Scissor over comb technique with your thinning scissor but only close that scissor a quarter to a half way, depending on the thickness of the hair. You just want to take a little bit of the thickness out so the haircut holds its shape as it grows in. So we're going to start out with the thinning shear over comb, and then we're going to move on to a razor sculpting technique, which is going to help, as you can see, right through the one side here and through the front there's a little bit of a wave that with the razor sculpting technique is just going to smooth that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a straight razor for cutting hair and just carefully we're going to glide it over the, we're going to hold, lock the hair with the comb and very carefully we're just going to glide it over the hair. And what this does is this is just going to scrape away a little bit of that top layer where you have that wave. We're going to come right across in the direction that it grows. And then now when we part it and comb it, it just kind of smooths the top off. So now that the haircut is complete, we want to brush off the client's face. And then we're going to take a smaller scissor and make sure that we um, clean up the eyebrows if there's some long eyebrows. Always ask first. I've asked ahead of time already, but you just want to make sure don't ever go after anybody's eyebrows unless they give you permission. Okay, so now the haircut is complete and we'll move on to the style. Okay, we have two choices here. I like to style the hair when it's completely dry, so you can either use a hair dryer, but the one thing you have to look out for is when you do use a hair dryer, you're, you're going to give the hair a lot of volume and a lot of lift, which is not necessarily uh, conducive to this haircut. So what I like to do is I just like to let the hair air dry, and I like to take a, uh, a medium, uh, medium thickness paste, and I like to just kind of push it across the top and the front, get it in on the sides, we get it in there good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back through with a vent brush. So we're going to use a brush with wider teeth. And then we're going to comb the hair through, brush the hair through <clears throat> in a few, different, you know, a few different angles to get the product all the way through. 
and then just comb it in the direction the way that uh, the gentleman had it combed when he came in. So keep a close eye on, on how your customer wears their hair when they walk in and before they sit down so you know exactly what you should be doing on the way out. And then this way too, the other benefit of um, a medium hold or a medium thickness paste is that it has a dry or a matte finish and it doesn't look like there's product in the hair. Okay, so that should do the trick and I'm just going to give you a quick 360 view of what the haircut should look like all the way around. Okay, and there you have it. The gentleman's taper is complete.